ladies and gentlemen, it is me again, Instinct Gorilla, and welcome back to my channel. This is a Deku What If. Um, I hear you asking, what about the whole Bell What If? Where's that? I'm working on it. It's taking a lot longer than I think it should be. But anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, bit of a rundown, quickly, I hear you ask. So... I'll give you a quick rundown. One, Bell, not Bell, Deku, he is going to be quirkless in all latter tense of the word. He doesn't have a quirk, but he does have, an, have a power that is bestowed upon him. From a force he does not know of. He has memories of his childhood and all that. And when he was killed as well. But getting his memories, or having his memories is one thing. But putting his new body to the test is another. He's not going to be the only one. But I'm going to add the other one later on. So I'm going to be starting the video off when he was killed. So I don't have to go through the whole factor of telling everybody how he died and who killed him. You just have to know that he was killed. This is before he even, well, before he met all my, the sludge villain actually um, took him this time and killed him. But anyway. He is also going to have a girlfriend early on, who is not going to be any of the main characters like Uraraka, Momo, or any of the girls that we know of. It's going to be a made up girl on my own end. So I do apologise if any of you wanted a, well, one of the char one of the girls from the main cast, such as Momo, Uraraka, Jiro, Mina. Um, Ojiro, not Ojiro, she's not the biggest guy, not a female. Basically any of the girls from Class 1A. No Kendo's from Class 1B, so it's not going to be her either. Nor is it going to be Melissa. So you know, it's not going to be any of those characters. Hell, it's not even going to be Toga, because she's fucking crazy. So, uh, yeah. See you all in the actual video. Right, this intro is too long. So, see ya. Peace. So, we start this off in a hospital. As, well, in the hospital there would be people checking over a corpse. A corpse of a green haired boy with four freckles on both of his cheeks. His eyes, that used to be full of life and green, were dulled and, well, completely lifeless. His out, not out, sorry, his, there would be Inko crying over the loss of her baby boy. Her boy had been killed. The heroes didn't save him. She just cries and cries and cries. Crying why? 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 Why did... Well, he have to be taken from her. Why did nobody do anything to save her son? Why? 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 There's a man, tall and imposing, with what should have been a giant smile on his face, trying to put everybody at ease, would be sombre and saddened. This would be All Might. As he'd walk up to the lady, well, Lady Inko, and put a muscled hand on her shoulder, as he'd just bow his head in, well, sorrow. As he would say, it is my fault, I'm so sorry, Inko. I should have gotten 
to him sooner. As Inko would snap, saying, You're the number one damn hero, All Might, and yet you couldn't protect my son. What kind of father does that? Believe their own son to die. Yes. In this world, heroes can have kids. But the heroes at the very top, like the number one to number three, their families are well hidden due to them having to keep them on the down low due to the enemies that they have made. All Might especially due to, obviously, Fucking all for one. So yeah, AFO to be precise. This all might would look down and say, Inko, I didn't know my son was going to be... Inko would slap him, saying, Your son, he never knew you. He never knew you were his dad. Every time he looked at you, I only swelled with hope that he would get a quirk so he could one day meet you. Every single day. And yet, no quirk came out of him at all. Like you told me, you were hoping he would inherit a quirk from, from yours. But he never did. Nazinko would just beat her hands onto his muscled chest. As she would have tears rolling down her eyes. Not seeing her husband's eyes tear up too. As he just cries out. You think I wanted my son. Ah, son. To be quirkless? No. I hoped he would get a quirk. That way I could help him. Get to know him in one a in UA even. But when I got the message from from one of my friends saying that he had been killed by the sludge villain that I was chasing because I lost sight of him. I it was almost would just finally let out a cry, a sob. Everybody had already evacuated, considering it's the number one hero, and he asked for, well, to be alone with the woman he knew as a very good friend, and wanted to have some time alone to help her mourn her son without anybody nearby. So that's why nobody had gasped at Inko screaming at him. is they'd hear someone shout hey you can't go up there the number one hero is there hey come back his all might would turn around Inko would turn as well as the door would be flung open as a girl tall rather slim an hourglass figure and the nice well Hercules figure upstairs and down Wearing what looks like a GI for uh, martial arts, would scream Izuku as she would just run up to his side, pat him down, and shake him, basically begging him to wake up. Inko would glower and narrow her eyes as she'd just grit her teeth. What do you want? Can't you see I'm mourning my son here? So the girl would look and narrow her eyes at Inko. Don't give me that crap, Inko. He's my boyfriend. I have more than, I have no, also the same rights of being here. This All Might would just look in between as the two girls would basically get into a full blown argument. As some secur security guards run up to uh, basically pull her out, All Might would just raise a hand saying, She's fine, let her stay. Security would basically look at him. All Might would just tell them to please leave. He'll sort this out himself. So they would. 
All Might would get in between the two arguing girls is you'd just say, Inko, calm. You should just glare at All Might. Don't tell me to calm. This worthless girl has no right being here. She has more rights to be here if she is Izuku's girlfriend. So Inko would just snarl. Clearly not impressed of the girl winning over the number one hero making her stay. <laughs> She's the most proud of one who got him killed. I did never do such a thing to Izuku. I would never do that to him. I would rather die in his place. I am not a heartless bitch. It is almost sigh. Inko, our son is dead. Allow his resting place to be quiet. Allow us all to grieve. As the girl would look at him in shock, but then look down in shame. He always looked up to you, you know? He wanted to learn martial arts to... to be on your level. All Might would just chuckle. I do hear that myself. I wish I only wish that I could I only wish that I could see my son and tell him how much he meant to me and apologize to him for never being around when he needed me. Is should just simply put a hand on his shoulder. Is he had well, hunched over his son's well bed his, where his corpse was where his corpse was. Is you can just say he thought of you a lot. He he always said that he was gonna be the number one hero, even without a quirk. And I was there cheering him on all the way. I know his mother was doing the same, although wishing that he wishing that he didn't become a hero. All I would look to Inko, who'd just look away in sadness, because I didn't want my boy to die. Is all I would ask, well, I need to ask you a question. What's your name? The girl would smile, saying, My name is... <laughs> My name is Amy. Amy, uh, well, Ryan Hart. It's almost would raise an eyebrow. Ryan Hart? Hmm, haven't heard of that family name in a while. I thought they were in... The Reinhardt family were into... Well... Suits of armour and all that. Not... Martial arts. I... <laughs> I walked away from the family. My folks and I had a... Disagreement. They said that... Mechanics is always better than... Dull, mach than dull martial arts. You need power and strength push through your enemies. All I said was, no, you need more than just strength to push through enemies. You need the talent to get through them too. Arguments happened and I walked. Ah. Very well. I believe Thomas Reinhardt would be your father, wouldn't he? <laughs> that he would. Unfortunately he died four years ago. And I only left two years ago. I see. Your mother was the one? No, it's my uncle. The uncle took over the business and... Uh, we're the ones who had the argument. <laughs> I still say you shouldn't be here near my son. Yes, everybody would just start, well... Arguing again. About who has the right and who doesn't have the right. 
until the all hear or see a blue wisp going past them at all. Because all of them would look towards where that wisp went. It's all my would think, did I just see that or was that my imagination? Inga would say, what's your quirk, girl? Light show? There's another argument would begin this time about quirks. All might would just roll his eyes. My wife can be so unpredictable and so childish when she wants. Hmm. This all might would walk closer to his son and look over his eyes. Hmm, there's nothing wrong there. You should see the wisp again. What is this? Is he back away? Because he wanted to see if he could see any more wisps of blue. As he slowly does see wisps of blue starting to shine from beneath the bed, coming from the ground even, wrapping around the well hospital bed. Where his son's body still is. Inko? Zinko would still be arguing with, well, <laughs> yeah, Amy. Amy Ryanhart. Inko! As he raises his voice even more, still the girls would be arguing. Until the wisps start slowly evaporating all over the place. And appearing in multiple different areas, as All Might would just shout, Inko! Look at what's happening to our son! Inko would just about to rebuke him about him being his only son until she'd see the blue wisps slivering around everywhere. The heck's happening? As Amy looks around too. By the way, Amy has red hair. So, yeah. I did have an image of what she would look like, but uh, I can't rightly find it. I'll most probably put editing in if I've actually find, found it or not, so uh, please on, be on standby for that. But anyway. Is Amy Inco and Toshinori, aka All Might, would all back away. As an energy pulse would ripple through the entire hospital. As he, well, as all of them, would cover their faces as the blast of energy would almost be overwhelming. As Zuku would still be there. As his body, well, seems to grow. Almost as if something was, well, never morphing his body. The blue glow still being there. And as the light gets bigger and bigger, they miss blue symbols or blue iconography writing themselves all over his body as some sort of metal halo would be over his head and then the light would fade as they'd all see Izuku sitting there eyes closed but they could see his breath could see his chest rising and falling rising and falling sorry that was a fly I was killing as Inko would cry saying what happened what happened to my baby boy as everybody would not know as medical staff would run in 
asking if everybody's here okay until they saw well Izuku's body breathing once more as everybody would be shocked All Might would be speechless he he has nothing to say about what what's going on with his son's body right now it's almost as if his body just went through a metamorphosis and changed from being scrawny to being almost on par with a bodybuilder of sorts. Hell, even martial artist, possibly. Amy would just look at him and blush, seeing his rippled chest. Sure, she found him cute when they first met two years ago, but other than that, there was nothing really too bad about him, but now he just looked dreamy in her eyes. Just made her love him even more. But she would snap her head out of it, saying, he was just killed for damn, damn it. Don't have such naughty thoughts. Get down and freaky with him in the bed when... No, no, no. Bad. Bad, bad, bad. Married first. Get married first. Then get down and dirty. Is Well, um, Amy was having her uh, mental battle with a perverted side that, uh, for some odd reason, decided to make itself known. Inko only cry, crying and wondering out loud, how is this possible? He had been dead for nearly 14 hours. How is he alive now? And Toshinori just thinks, what an interesting power. But what was it? I've never seen anything like it. Perhaps Nezu knows something about it. Perhaps it has something to do with those old ruins we found. That the Hero Committee found in Eastern Europe. Or was it somewhere in the west of Europe? Hmm. We're going to have to talk to Nezu about this. It is. Well. The doctors and everybody would be poking, prodding, and checking his vitals. All of them saying that he's perfectly stable. Almost as if he hadn't suffered a single blemish. As if his whole body was just, well, perfect in its own way. All Might would just stop them and ask, wait a minute, if Izuku Midoriya's body is like this now, what kind of quirk activated? Some quirks have required the host to die, but it's been almost 14 hours since he had passed off. Can anybody tell me what happened? And how is it alive now? As one of the nurses would just shrug with a simple, mm -hmm. How are we meant to know? This has never happened before. And as her arm would be grabbed by a very muscular arm, I should look to see the boy awake. <clears throat> I think I can... I think I can answer that. As everybody would tell him to lie down, he's still not healed. As he simply... Well... <sighs> gently pushed him away. Although when he gently pushed them, it almost felt like they were being thrown. Uh, sorry. Uh. Uh. Yes, before he could speak, a girl would slam into him, crying, Izuku, 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 don't do that to me again. As he'd look down to see red hair, as he'd just chuckle, saying, Sorry, Amy. Sorry. I... I should just kiss... Just, she would just kiss him on the lips and break off saying, Shut up, you idiot. She should just put herself into his chest, crying, saying, I was so worried. I thought I truly had lost you. His All Might would break into a small smile, seeing the 
seeing her loving his son with all her heart as a simple tear would leak out of his eye as he'd just say what a beautiful sight Inko temporarily lost in her son's resurrection would forget all about her having a beef with the girl who's now hugging her precious Izuku as Izuku would finally break the hug and the kiss actually delivered a smack to his lips again as he would just say I I have a lot of things to say and I want you all might to be my witness to this but the nurses and doctors that you trust need to stay they need to hear about this as well because this is this is a humongous occasion here Zormite might would narrow his eyes and nod as he'd signal for two doctors well for the doctors and nurses to stay but everybody else had to leave these are the doctors and nurses I would trust for my life, my my friend. As he, about, as he was about to say, son, as, as he could notice that he was about to say something else. Before we get started, I'm your son, ain't I? As all my eyes would widen, Inko's eyes would also widen but narrow as well, considering that all my basically allowed her son to be killed on his watch, when he promised her that nothing would for, well, befell their son when they married in secret. As all would just cough a few times and say, How did you know? I may have been dead, but my soul was still alive. I just had to ask, thinking that maybe I was just going a bit crazy. But your spluttering confirmed it. I always thought I had a unique fondness for you somehow. Guess I was right. Is all might would just deflate. Not like Puff and goes into skinny form. His ego would deflate him. As he would just think and I thought I was being cautious. Is his ego would just chuckle. The best laid plans sometimes never fall through properly. Toshinori would just chuckle. That is true. Now, can you tell us how you're still alive? Right. If you haven't watched uh, Skyfall's or Skyforge's uh, opening trailer, please go and watch it. It's basically that. But instead of a ship, it was a light leading back to his body. Is Zuku would explain all of it. So that light that was surrounding us now was happening inside your head too, or inside a well space where only the souls of the dead go. Zuku would just nod. Yeah, pretty much. But there was something in there as well, like a message. I was being told about some sort of city that had been long since destroyed and sunk to the bottom of the ocean. There was a lot of things that that was just too out there. I I I couldn't understand it at all. Hmm. City that was one that was sunk to the bottom of the ocean eons ago. Hmm. It could be Atlantis. Is Inko would give him a bit of a really look. Is Inko, I will just say this, Inko does work and she is a um, archaeologist, but since obviously Izuku was born, she spent more and more time at home. So she wasn't completely out of the blue on mythology like Atlantis, there being a city hidden somewhere in the. In, most probably the deserts as well. She's heard numerous cons conspiracies and rumours 
And as an archaeologist, she goes to investigate them. And she just chuckles slightly, saying, There's no Atlantis at all. Sure, there's a big lake in wherever people claimed Atlantis would be. I think I would just chastise them both and say that it's untrue, and we've perfectly confirmed that there's no Atlantis city at all. Zuku would just look at his mum and say, Mum, I saw a city of gleaming towers. And these towers reached the sky. Far above the sky's atmosphere that we, that mortals have made now. Mortals? You make it sound like you're not mortal yourself. That's the problem. I'm called an immortal. Immortal? I'm sorry, I'm not following. Neither am I, Zuzu. What do you mean, immortal? And what's this whole mortal aspect that you just said? Yeah, I, shit, sorry about that. Um, from what I can gather from what I was told, I'm the successor of millions of years of human evolution. God complexes, anybody? Like Zeus, Hades, Hermes, the Greek pantheons, the pantheons of different religions? They were all real at one point. But they weren't just called gods. They were called elder gods. No ordinary gods, then elder gods, then ultra gods. Ze like I said, the Greek pantheons, the Shinto pantheon here in Japan, pantheons everywhere. They used to be real. Everybody, everybody's gods were once real. Living, breathing flesh, bone, blood, bone, blood and flesh, or flesh and bone, were, they were real and they were walking. They were walking all over the place, saving the world from invaders beyond the stars, or hell, even from different planets in our own galaxy, believe it or not. And that's not the bad thing, or well, that's not only a bad thing, the worst thing is they're still existing, and they're still coming. It's only it would basically raise it cock an eyebrow. Son, what are you talking about? Who are the enemies? Let me just stop here because I need to go and figure out what they are called again. Okay, you guys can see it now. Most probably they'll go off in a couple of seconds. But yeah, I can't rightly remember the names other than the Reapers of Death and the Vern. So yeah, sorry about that. So, Izuku would tell him all about the enemies that he could just roughly remember. It was a huge information dump, and he was only given the names of the enemies. He got very rough indications of what they even looked like. He just sighs and says, I'm sorry, but that's all I can remember. But I do know that there was one enemy. One entity so powerful so strong it took the greatest immortal of his generation of immortals to be forged to, to finally take it down and even then he was placed in a curse to die a slow painful death even his immortality couldn't help him or her, or whoever it was. They just couldn't... S they couldn't last. Approximately 30,000 years ago... Eventually he died. He or she died. A gruesome death by the Vern. 
Vern, Reapers of Death, so that means hell's a thing. No, the Vern come from a planet. I, I think, there, there's not much known about the Vern, but I think they come from a planet. Or hell, they could come from a different galaxy altogether after conquering it. I don't know. Well, this is... alarming. It's not just alarming, Father. It's... It's terrifying. I don't know what the enemy's up to. I'm scared. I don't know if I can help or even save the world on my own. I may be strong now, but... As the doctors found out, I'm strong enough to yeet them away. No offense. If I've hurt any of them, any of you. It's one of the doctors who just shrug. Yeah, it's okay. But now... All I can see is that... All I can tell you... Is that I... I need to train hard. Does UA accept people who come under very unusual circumstances? That, that it does, yes. Why? If we're gonna have a chance of any other immortals being a thing, they're gonna have to be strong. Strong-willed and a lot of things. Hmm. What about Katsuki Bakugo? Your friend. He... That boy was never my friend, mother. That boy is so over-arrogant, he'll turn into a reaper. Just for the hint of more power, to prove he's better than everybody else. You know he's been telling me to kill myself? Because he doesn't know who my father was? Minsky would have never had his her, let her son say that to you. Only if Minsky never knows. Minsky doesn't know, and if she did, she damn well lets him think that he's completely un well unfathomable not to believe he's a goody goody two shoes when she knows he ain't. Mom. Me and Bakugo had stopped being friends a long time ago. Ever since he got his quirk and started bullying people. Me and him had been long since distant friends at least. And everybody at school knows that me and him used to be friends. He calls me Deku for Christ's sake. Worthless. A stone. A pebble just to be kicked out of the way. He sees everybody like that. Guy's got an ego worse than Endeavor. And that's saying something. Yeah. You know want know the thing that's annoying the most? He wants to beat my own damn father into the ground to prove he was always better than even a number one hero. Ha! <laughs> I'd like to see the punk try. Don't tempt him. Oh mate, don't tempt him. He's a he's more than willing to He's more than willing to do it. You're strong, yes. But even you have a limit. And Bakugo waits for that limit to be hit all the damn time. No matter what I do to try and get him to stop bullying others, he... he makes sure that I suffer. Everybody else... They're either afraid of him, or enjoy having his company, because it makes them feel strong. Nobody's worthy, worthy of being a hero in there. The teachers encourage him to bully others, to put them down, to put them in their place, where only a real heroes, like himself, deserve to go to UA. 
His scores are good in the practical tests and in the physical ones. But the physical ones are only because he bullies so many people he can actually get to where he wants to be. Damn it. He's already applied for UA, hasn't he? Yeah, he already has. And his appliance has been accepted. Well, Christ. Almighty. But, but why would Bakugo... I don't know Bakugo personally, Mrs. Midoriya, but I have seen him. Your son's telling the truth. He has done nothing but bully. Everybody who knows him are scared of him. The only person who stands up to him is Izuku. The teachers dare not stand up to Bakugo, because they encourage his bullying, saying that all heroes with powerful quirks bully. I didn't bully anyone. Hell, I was quirkless before, I, before my quirk was activated. And I never bullied, and I was never bullied. Either. So who's giving him the idea that bullying is a good idea? Uh, his teachers? Hello? I did just say that. Oh, yeah, right, I forgot. And I thought that school was meant to be good. <sighs> Private tutoring would have been better. Honestly, I know somebody in UA who does private tutoring one on one. Although he is a lazy ass. Although he also is because he also stays out way too long during the night time. As an underground hero. Who? Uh. Eraserhead or. Bingo. He's the only one I know who's an underground hero. Sure, there are other people. That are also underground heroes, but uh, not many of them I actually know personally. Aizawa is the only one I know personally. Aizawa is also the teacher of 1A this year. Or, well, he has been for a while actually, but hey, you all get the message. Why would he help Izuku? Well, for starters, he's the damn best person I know, and second of all, if this is actually somewhat of a quirk now, he can cancel it just in case people, you know, end up having the same ability and end up bullying a lot of other people. I don't want that guilty conscience on my mind. Mom. What is it, sweetheart? Just to let you know, I'm sorry. You don't have to be sorry. It's my fault, I should have understood, and so should have seen Bakugo for what he truly is. An unrepenting bully. I'm sorry you had to put up with him for so long, without me picking up his true nature. Forgive me. You're already forgiven, Mom. Thank you, sweetheart. Well, can you forgive your father for not being there for you all the time? Knowing that you're the number one hero is all that matters to me. I understand. You have a lot of enemies. Well, my mom said that you had enemies, and if they knew that I was your son, they'd kill me to get to you, or kidnap me to get to you. I had a feeling that you were most probably one of the top three heroes. I thought you were number two at most. Turns out you're number three, you're the first hero. Number one of the heroes of Japan. It makes more sense now. And I guess, could I change my last name to yours? <laughs> Not yet. Not everybody knows that I have a son. Aizawa knew, knew. He was there at your mother and mine, your mother's and my secret wedding, along with all the staff of UA. Who I'm actually now going to start working there, so you and me get to hang out quite a lot. If you accept my proposal, that is. Oh boy, that means I never get to see my son. Hey, you got to spend, like, what? Fifteen years with him? I barely got to spend a single day with him, because I was so scared that people would understand my other identity. 
of being, well, not All Might. And by the way, I'm not doing a loud voice for All Might because, fuck's sake, that would do my throat in. Yes, the staff members would nod, saying, well, we know that he's your son and we'll keep this off record. Thank you. And please, keep on the down low. Nobody else should know that I'm his father. As all the nurses and doctors would nod, as all of them were vowed to keep this secret and take it to their graves. And so, All Might would offer to train Izuku. Yes, Inka would only inwardly cry, saying, My baby boy is now going to turn into a muscle bound idiot. Although the muscle bound idiot was his father, who I fell in love with. Oh, this is so annoying. Yes, well. All Might would even, well, address, well, I forgot her name now, Amelia, I believe, yeah, I believe I named her Amelia, sorry, if I screwed up her name, sorry, so, you know what, F screw it, one minute. Okay, sorry about that, it was Amy, I named her Amy, whoopsies, my fault. So, this All Might would even invite Amy to their training montage. Is Amy would, Amy, Inko, and Inko would all sweat drop at the whole word of training a montage, coming from a his father and husband's lips. Is Inko would jump up and smack him at the back of the head, making him kind of cough and rub the back of his head in embarrassment as he'd just cough again saying sorry um force of habit as Amy would just shake her head and just say Izuku your family's weird Izuku would only chuckle saying and I've only known my dad for a few hours and I'm certainly agreeing with you All Might would just face well face fault and then get back up, acting if nothing happened, cough, and, uh, well, explain what will be happening when Izuku gets out of, well, his little well, problem of the hospital bed. And he did say pretty much it's a requirement for you to spend at least a couple more days in here to make sure that nothing bad has truly gone wrong with you since your little uh, transformation. So, two days will be required. See ya! As he would disappear in speed, Inka would scream, Don't run in a hospital, you muscle bound moron. As Inka would just sigh, and she'd look to her son and just wave, saying, Don't worry about your father, I will knock some sense into that brain of his, even if it's the last thing I do. You can just sigh, move on, and, well, just hope and pray that her son doesn't do anything as stupid as his own father. God, she hopes so, anyway. Because knowing All Might, he would most probably corrupt her little Zuku into being, well, covered in muscle, making her feel like she just needs to hit her head against a brick wall for roughly around like 20 minutes. So the two days would pass. Everybody would kind of understand what happened to Izuku. One in his, pri well, in his high school, the people who had known Izuku, which are quite a few people because he often stands up to Bakugo, would not recognise him. Sure, they would remember the green hair, but they wouldn't recognise the bulging muscles that they could see on him. Hell, a few girls actually have blushes and, well, secretly try to uh, crop a feel of his muscles to see how thickly muscled he is. He's not like All Might in the form that he usually has in actual canon. He's more along the lines of canon of Prime... All Might or Prime Toshinori as All Might when he met David Shield. 
in America, I believe. So yeah, Mizuku is very, very well muscled in the form of Prime All Might. When people ask him, after realising who he is, how the hell did he get that much muscle, Mizuku just lies and says it was his quirk. His quirk activated after he was, well, quote-unquote, killed by the sludge villain. Everybody would be shocked that Izuku Midoriya, the guy they all don't mind getting along with, was killed by a sludge villain. And his quirk activated that brought him back to life and gave him the physique of a world-class bodybuilder. He wasn't completely slabbed head-to-toe in muscle, but his muscles were visible for people to see, but he wasn't like a goddamn berserker from Gears of War. Who wasn't a male, was female. <laughs> yeah, berserkers in Gears of War was... Uh, they weren't fun to take down. <laughs> Speaking of Gears of War, anybody played it recently? Because I sure as hell have, and I hate it nowadays. But hey, moving on. Izuku would move throughout the day. Everybody talking about just how Izuku Midoriya survived, came back to life after a villain killed him. He was given a quirk after he died that resuscitated him, came back to life. The only person who hated hearing this was, you guessed it, Bokugo. And the ones who hate Izuku, because they are on team we love to bully Bokugo side. So yeah, they would still bully Izuku. They wouldn't be impressed by his physique. Sure, it's impressive. But they see it as just weaker weaklings trying to make themselves look strong. Quirk or not, they didn't care. So, Bokugo would plan a little ambush on his uh, on Azuka's way home. As he planned to confront him and basically beat him to within an inch of his life, screaming, if you dare go to UA, I'll kill you. Basically. Basically the whole shtick that Bokugo just tries to get him to get out of his way and not even bother going to UA. So yeah. He would begin his little uh his little plan to uh get Deku down and also get him to uh not to go to UA claiming that only he's the worthy one to go to UA, not him. Completely unaware that Bakuko is talking to the number one's number one hero's son. But again, since nobody knew that uh, the number one ha- hero had a family, let alone had a child, or even a wife, for instance, so nobody knows. So when Bakugo uh, pushes Izuku around, and then puts him into the ground, or tries to, nowadays, Bakugo always seemed to get what he wanted. But, this time was different. When Bakugo walked to his ambush point, his goons followed Izuku. They found a redhead with him. Is they'd both be laughing, joking, and to their shock, holding hands. This woman was his girlfriend, and well, they didn't know her name, but they sure as hell weren't gonna let her get in the way of beating Izuku. So, 
they'd walk straight into the park, straight where the ambush point was. And so, Bokugo would jump out of a tree screaming, Die! As he would blast Izuku smack bang in the back of the head, causing him to, well, stumble forward. And Bokugo put quite the power behind it to push him to the floor. So when Izuku just stumbled, Bokugo looked straight at the back of the head to see that he had burned off quite a bit of the hair of Izuku. As, well, Alice just shouts Izuku. Izuku just turns his head, slowly looking at Bokugo. Bokugo just sneers, saying, What are you going to do about it? All Izuku just says is, Leave. Now. All Bokugo would do is just laugh, saying, Or oh, what? What are you going to do about it? Izuku just glare, saying, Bokugo, I used to look up to you as a friend. Now all I'm seeing is a major irritant. And that irritant is you. Leave me alone. Of course, Bakugo would just scream, What, you think you're better than me, huh? Zuko would just say, No. I don't think I'm better than you. I know I'm better than you. Because I don't go down to your level. I'm not a little bitch who thinks that just because I have a super powerful quirk, I can get away with it. No. Everybody has a different quirk. Some of them are going to be twice as powerful as yours. And I'm looking forward to seeing you eat fucking dirt when you realise that other people have power stronger than yours. Of course, Bokugo would absolutely lose it. And just scream, die. Damn Deku. Izuku just, well, pulls Alice, well, yeah, Alice near him, and puts her behind him. Her putting her, well, crossing her hands behind him, thinking that she was going to get hit from behind, from Izuku getting blown back. And Izuku basically rams his head straight towards Bokugo's hand. As Bokugo just smiles, saying, Die, you Deku bastard. As an explosion would go off. Alice screaming. As Izuku just plows his head through the smoke. Bokugo just screams, What? As you get hit smack in the face. Now you would say, Ooh, that's going to leave a mark. It It did. It not only left a mark, it left a bloody nose. Bokugo would stumble back due to the hit. The hit was that hard, it actually knocked him to the floor. Izuku just standing there, slightly dazed, due to the, well, explosion going off, smack the bang in his face. And the concussion force was uh, decently strong. He'd then look smack bang at Bokugo and glare. As he'd just say, You had enough yet, Bokugo? Bokugo would just scream, Never! Not until you leave your application to even go to UA, you Deku wannabe. You're nothing compared to the real heroes. As Alice would just walk from behind Izuku, and she would basically karate chop Bokugo in the back of the neck, well, into the neck, making him lose consciousness. And she just screams, leave my Izu alone, you worthless nobody. Basically, Izuku just, just says, "Rowl" to her, making her blush, saying, sorry about that. He just pissed me off. The way he was just berating you. Izuku would just chuckle saying, 
Well, I knew you loved me and all that, but I could have dealt with him. He's not worth it anymore. And you bullies can come out of the forest. As, but as Decky would turn, Alice would wonder why he called out to the bullies. And she'd see roughly around about, well, five to six bullies, all coming out with weapons. As they planned to beat him with weapons. As Alice would just scream, what are you guys doing? You could kill him with this. Is they'd all just look at her and sneer, but some would look at her with a bit of a lustful look, which didn't go unnoticed by, Z by Zuku, who, uh... If you said he was pissed, you wouldn't be wrong. He was damn pissed. No one looked at his woman like that and got away with it. As one of them would walk up and slam his metal pipe into Zuku's head, as he made a clear reach for his girl to uh, drag her away so they could beat Izuku, then have a bit of a ba-bing, ba-boom, ba-bang with her body. Only for his hand to be grasped, as he'd look to Izuku, only to see the pipe had bent around his head. As he would just say, one, that hurt, two, that didn't even hurt. That didn't even make me flinch. Bokugo's explosions did more damage than that. As he'd be, well, toss him away using his strong ass arms, is to just fling the guy, causing him to trip over his own feet and stumble and roll on the, to the floor, then smack his head against the wall. And Zuku would then look to the other bullies. And say, one, I should be very well impressed that you bullies even had the balls to fight me. But you made one hell of a mistake. As he didn't realise that Bokugo was starting to get up. You went after my girlfriend. As any self righteous man who stays faithful to the one woman that he loves. If you ever had girlfriends and you went for another woman, they would kick your ass. And I could say this, I'm going to do my girlfriend a good, better thing. I'm going to kick your ass so hard you're going to be shitting blood for the next couple of weeks. So I'm going to give you one option. Run now and not get a absolute ass chewing of a lifetime, or stay, and I'll make sure you shit blood. Pick your poison. Efficiently quelled, the ones who were not ballsy enough to stay left by stage right. They just left, throwing their items down to the ground and running. Bokugo just screams, Fuck you, Deku. I'm not scared of your weak ass. Completely forgetting that his girlfriend was the one who knocked his ass out. Is Alice just just screams? Will you f just for the fuck's sake just shut the fuck up? And she would once again karate chop him in the neck, once again knocking him out, knocking him out because he was too self-centered on Zuku to realize that the man's GF was standing in front of him. Fucking idiot. And yes, I am basically making this a uh, Bokugo bashing moment. As Bokugo would just flop to the floor unconscious. And so all Azuku would just do is, uh, I would, would say, I would do the row comment again, but uh, hot damn. That idiot does not pay attention. Especially to a very beautiful woman kicking his ass. He should just smile with a pink tinge, with a tinge of pinkness to her cheeks. Fucking flies. Sorry about that. Is Alice would just say, oh, quit it, you. 
is she'll just grab his arm and run off with him. All both all very well, both of them not paying attention to Bakugo who's just got swirls in his eyes. As he slowly comes back around, asking Did I get that damn Deku? As he just stumbles all the way home. With the Midorias all might wouldn't be there because obviously number one hero still he still has to keep his family safe so uh, he uh, when he got home with Alice well Inko was still not happy about her dating his well her son but uh, stern look from Azuku told her to just please for the love of God drop it other than that Nothing much. Izuku, Alice, then get a message from All Might on um, Izuku's phone that he gave him, basically giving him the location of a beach, Degaba Beach, in fact. It took him a little while to actually find it, because he wanted to find a place that was big enough for actual training methods and to see how strong his son actually is with his new body. And Alice came along because she wanted to train as well, because she was planning to go to UA herself. She does have a quirk. It is called, well, impact. Whenever she hits something, it can actually, well, make a booming sound of an impact. And the force behind that boom sends them backwards. Think of All Might uh, basically saying Detroit smash punching out his arm, and a gust of wind comes out. Or AFO's wind cannon. Pick your poison, either or. Is she joins him, they laugh, joke, and train. Alice watches Azuku train his body and his physical strength, seeing how strong he actually is. Well, she trains her actual body into having more stamina, more speed, a little bit more strength for when she throws her punches and impact can have more of a force to it. And basically All Might begins training them both, but what Alice doesn't know is that All Might's actually training her to become his next, well, his successor. He was planning to give his quirk to her, considering one for all can be passed on. And so, when halfway through, or hell, not even halfway through, at the end of the ninth month, All Might, well, near the end of the nine months, like halfway through the ninth month, All Might brings both of them to the side of Degaba Beach, where they had very well cleaned it, actually. It's virtually nearly cleaned. All Might would say, look, Alice, I have to say this to you. I'm not disappointed. In fact, I am over the moon with your improvements. You are absolutely amazing, like my son. And just to let you know, I do not disapprove of you and my son Izuku being a thing. Inko may disapprove, but she's just going to have to get over it. Izuku has his own life. And I appreciate you doing what you're doing, being near him. Is Alice would just smile with a cheerful way, knowing that having the appraisal of the number one hero of Japan, praising her for her skill and being well romantically involved with his son, is something that all girls would want, especially from the idol of everybody. Is All Might would just laugh, it's, you can clearly see that she's, well, emotional about it. Azuku being the same thing as well, considering, because, come on, All Might's his dad, so, fuck it. So, All Might would then drop the bombshell, I'm training you specifically to become my successor of my quirk. That brought a grinding halt to their mental cheers. As both of them would just look at him and say, say, Huh? 
As Alice would ask the question, successor, I thought your quirk was just born with you. All Might would sigh, saying, no, my quirk was given to me from another. My quirk is called All for One, or One for All. It is basically a stockpiling quirk. And I have deemed you, young lady, as my successor. Regardless of what Izuku says, I deemed you worthy. In the hospital, that you stood up for my son whenever Inko was getting into your face. You looked at her calmly and righteously told her what you thought. I respect you too much for that. My wife is and always has been a bit of a worry wart for our son regardless of how many times I've told her not to be but believe me when I tell you this I am deeply gratified that you young lady had always thought of my son as him not as anything else but him and for that you'll always have my great gratifications is, well, should blush and just whisper, thank you, All Might. As All Might would finally say, at the end, I thought I would have to give you this after the nine, the ten months of training. As he would pluck, his, pluck a single hair, as he would show it to her. Eat this! Is should kind of gag, really, saying, a hair. Um, could we do it a different way? As All Might would chuckle and rub the back of his head and basically give the same explanation as canon, is she would swallow eventually after gagging. Izuku only slightly wince at the look, knowing that uh, what she is tasting is not exactly uh, brilliant. <laughs> So, but yeah. <laughs> After that, Z Zuku and everybody just trains again while one for all spreads throughout Alice's body. As Alice finally comes out with the question of how do I activate OFA? One for all. Is. Toshinori Yagi, aka All Might, if you didn't know his real name by the way, would just say that this kind of happens naturally, but don't f put it into all into one of your arms, or otherwise it'll blow off like a well spit like a noodle. Basically, said the same thing in canon to Izuku when he gave it to Izuku, and getting the same face from both of them. That of fear. As All Might would just chuckle, saying, "Just make sure you don't do that, do that at all, or otherwise it'll, well, do that." So they both decided to uh, test it. Alice flooded her whole body with it slowly, allowing the power to, uh, well, start building up. And as it builds up, she gets. She feels more and more power building in her system. And then, finally, when she has enough of it, she just shouts, SMASH! Throwing her fist forward and breaking her fingers. As All Might would wince, Izuku would, well, get over to her quickly, check her fingers, Seeing that they're all like spindly, broken, and out of shape, is he just shout, "Dad, what do I do?" Is all I would just say, "There's one person I would know to help me out with that, and she's not going to be impressed." Is he would just ask, "Who?" As a woman's voice would be heard, "For goodness, Grace, for goodness sake, to all might, did you seriously have to teach this girl on how to use your quirk?" so early on. As an elderly woman with a cane would be glaring straight at Toshinori. As he'd just gulp. As he'd just say, Hey, uh, medical girl. 
This medical girl would just sigh, saying, You're lucky I live near here, and I heard the explosion from my house. Is Well, is it good walk up the steps? Recovery girl gawking at such a huge boy. And yes, yeah, she knew that Izuku was his son, but still. She mumbled to herself, Oh my, why have you been feeding him? Of course, he didn't tell her that it was because Izuku had died and came, got back to life. Got, got, got brought back to life. Sorry, English fun. He wasn't going to let Recovery Girl know that. Because hell knows what she'll do and say if he told her, Oh, my son died and got brought back to life due to a mysterious power that wasn't of this world. Well, wasn't of this world, and he can turn into a god, most probably at will. So yeah, not really going to tell her that. Zuku just mumble, "What's this? Who is she?" Is Toshinori would just whisper, "That's Recovery Girl, Yue's medical, well, head medical staff member. One of the best women you can ever have as a." Or medical teacher, if you're ever into checking out injuries and all that. She's the best. Yes, she would just berate All Might for allowing the girl to once again use his quirk without proper supervision and proper training. All Might gets the hell beaten out of him word wise. But after that, she would just basically tell her to never use that quirk unless. It is absolutely necessary for training. And well, she wasn't really going to uh, <laughs> argue with Recovery Girl. Because, come on, uh, it's Recovery Girl. And after the well, month had gone past, or the remaining of the month had gone past, her fingers were back to normal, thanks to Recovery Girl. And when she woke up, she found herself in Izuku's room. And she'd click her fingers, saying, All right, I'm living with Izuku now. And she'd get out of bed. She'd walk out, seeing well, that Izuku, his mum, and his father are there. In a skinnier form today. And yes, she had found out about All Might's skinny form. Along with Izuku, which was rather funny. So, yeah, flashback. Toshinori, Izuku, and Alice would be all walking into the house of the Midorias. Or slash, t slash Nori family as well. There's all mate would cough, and then all of a sudden pop into smoke. Both of them would wave the smoke away as they'd just see a man in the middle of the smoke coughing and ha hacking and coughing. As you'd say, damn it, I thought I had enough time. Sorry, I accidentally hit my mic trying to kill a fly. As both of them would see a skinny man with the same yellow hair, more sunken eyes, and a very skinny form. As he'd just be throwing his hands all over the place. And Zuku would get ready to throw a punch, saying, Who the hell are you? And he'd just say, Well, son, this is not how I wanted to show what I looked like to you. Hearing the words, son, Zuku's eyes widen. D Dad? As Alice's mind is sort of saying, wait, if this is All Might, then that means, oh dear, he has a small form too. As Inko would sigh, saying, I thought you were not going to run out for a while. I thought you had three more hours. As All Might only put three fingers up. Nope, I'm down to three hours now, not six. Ah, <sighs> seriously? Yeah, seriously, sorry about that. You know those, uh, 
guys who love to flex at the at the um, pool after a good swim. Um, like that, unfortunately. Yes. Both Izuku and Alice would both scream, How is that an explanation? So, All Might would tell them, or Toshinori, I should call him that, be calling him that now, would pretty much explain all about All for One and AFO. Well, One for All and, one for all and All for One is a little rivalry. He explains it to the best of his abilities, missing out a few things here and there. He did say there were the, that there was a first wielder of OFA, but he is considered the eighth holder. And Alice, Ryan Hart, would be considered the ninth holder. He knows that uh, they have multiple abilities in there somewhere, but he was never strong enough to actually unlock the abilities. She may be able to actually unlock them, considering that she's already physically and mentally tough. And so, yeah. That would be the end of the conversation. The day of the UA entrance exam. Oh boy! <laughs> All Might told Izuku that he could get in on recommendation alone from the number one hero. But Izuku declined, saying, No, I want to go in... Through the front door. I won't go in through any side passages. And so, he would do. Alice just hugging up to him. There's multiple people would see him. A lot of people would comment that, damn, she's hot. And a lot of girls would say, damn, he's cute. Too bad that he's already taken. I wonder if she would allow me to take him for a day. And a lot of guys are just saying, wait, wait until we get into UA, we'll ask her out and ask us, ask her to leave him behind, saying, and basically saying that they're more suited for her than anything else. And those of them, all, both of them could hear this, is Alice would scoff, saying, don't worry, don't worry, Zuzu, I'll never leave your side. You're the only one for me. It should peck him on the lips, causing ev well, causing the girls to sigh in, with hearts in their eyes. As the boys just curse. Well, curse out Azuku. As they hear a girl kind of scream as they look ahead to see a girl had fallen forth, and as simply because they're close by, they'd run to grab her and help her up, only for her to say to then suddenly start floating, as so you can just hear a sigh. Whew, that's a relief. Bad luck to hit the fall down on my first day. As both of them would just sigh. As Alice would just say, well, at least we know she can help herself. Zuko would just say, yeah, at least we know. This would walk up beside her. Zuko would ask, Hey, are you okay? The girl would look at him and basically say, Yeah, I'm good. I just had a slight mishap. It should look into his face and see a very handsome guy. As a pink cheeks would already go even deeper of a pink. As Alice would just sigh, saying, Oh, great. My boy BF has already got a fan base. It's she would shake her head, saying, Sorry, my name is Ochako Rodoraka. Zuku Midoriya. Is he would look to Alice. Oh, right. Alice Reinhardt. Nice to meet you. And Piers, my boyfriend, and you have now introduced yourselves too. It should purposely say boyfriend in slow words to get the message across that he is hers. She can back off. Is well. Uraraka would uh, blink, and then say, "Oh, I didn't know." Well, congrats. Secretly jealous that she couldn't find a boyfriend like this. He's built like a shit brick house. 
is Alice would just smirk triumphantly. Zuku would just roll his eyes, knowing that his girlfriend's just being overprotective. It's not like any girl actually has the balls to actually come up and literally, out loud, ask him to go out with her in front of his own girlfriend. He hasn't met Mina yet. So yeah, they would go in and go straight to the first part of the entrance exam. Zuku would see plenty of people. He would even see a girl with long raven black hair done up in a ponytail. He would see, well, a boy with balls on his head that seemed to be looking and eyeing up the girls. When he looked at his girl, on the other hand, he basically put himself in front of her, glaring at the boy, and mouthed, Back off. She's not on, she's not on the table. The boy got the message and immediately started looking elsewhere, although secretly was still eyeing uh, Izuku's girl up. We all know who it is, and we all know that Moneta would do it. So, yeah. He'd see a boy with a tail, a girl with ear jack lobes, a guy with multiple arms, a guy who looked like he had a rock for a face, obviously being Koda, the guy who can speak to animals, and a girl who was obviously invisible. Then there was... A girl with pink hair, well, with pink skin and dark pink hair? Or very light pink hair? And dark dark eyes and yellow irises? Did the girl that looked like a frog? Somebody else as well? That looked like he got tape for arms as his elbow joints? There would be multiple other people. And then he would meet, or see, two people. One he did not want to see again, and the other he thought he recognised from somewhere. The first one being Katsuki Bakugo. Still pissed off that he has to go through a test like this. And another who looks completely apathetic to everybody's plight. He would just whisper... Keep your eyes on the guy with the fully frozen body and ice. They should look, saying, Oh, I see him. It's, well, everybody would do their, well, first written test. And with the written test, Izuku would be the second one to finish. The first one to finish would be... Well, the girl with a very big bust and, well, raven hair. Momo. If you hadn't guessed of who it was. And so, yeah, he would be the second to finish. The third to finish was, well, the girl with pink skin. The next to finish was Ochako. The next to finish was Bakugo, so on and so forth. The last one to finish would be his girlfriend. As he asks, what took her so long? And she just says, I got, lo I got stuck on so many questions. Zuku would understand, nod, and just kiss her on the cheek, saying, don't worry about it. Of course, he did that in front of a lot of people, telling all the girls that he is already taken. Although it didn't, wasn't stopping a certain pink skinned girl from asking numerous questions of how they met, yada yada yada. And she is known as the gossiper for a reason. Other than that, they just went into the next part of the exam, which was the physical test. This is where paths divulge. Zuku still went to the same one in canon, while... Alice ended up going to a different one. So, yeah. They ended up being split. 
Zuku and Alice would both hug each other and leave. Zuku going to, well, the same one in canon, so he'd meet up with uh, Ida, who he didn't see because, well, he wasn't actually looking in Ida's direction, as he was about to go up to Udaraka to keep her calm. He does meet Ida then, because obviously, well, Ida's the, uh, you have to go by the rules, you have to do this all the time, you can't just do this, you can't do that. Y yeah, um, I think we can all tell that Azuku didn't, doesn't, well, Azuku in this doesn't care about the rules. As you just simply point out, saying she is nervous, I'm going to give her a bit of a rousing speech to try and get her hopes up. So if you don't mind, he'd just yank his arm away and just move. Ida would just growl saying you shouldn't be disobeying the rules. We're meant to be heroes. This isn't a social call. Azuki would just ignore it. It's like, dude, I just told you what I'm going to do. He'll go up to Uraraka and talk to her. She would blush knowing that he is... Technically got a GF, but he's talking to her obviously to help her out. She's she knows that, and it's quite clear that his little pep talk actually did help her out a bit, which was just take a deep breath and breathe in and breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Calm your body, calm your mind, and no matter how many enemies you face. With a calm head and a calm mind, with a calm body and a calm mind, you will be able to succeed. And the director accepted that quite a lot. So she should get ready to face off against anybody else. So when Azuku finally walked away with a big, big cheesy grin on his face, knowing that he had helped one of his fellow, hopefully fellow, fellow classmates, get unnervified, the door would open. Present Mike would scream that what you're waiting for, there's no countdowns in a real battle, go, go, go. Zuki would be the first to take off, followed by Edia using his engines to uh, virtually blitz past Izuku. He may be fast, but he's not that fast. He can't outrun a bullet, let alone run out Ida, who's going at what seems like to him Mark II. So yeah. And that the Well, get in there. Zuku would start busting down robots with his fists. As he does actually need to use a weapon for some of his actual moves, he's still pretty good with his with uh, his big meaty hands as he grabs a two pointer slams it into a three pointer then tosses the remaining of the two pointer into a one pointer grabbing a three pointer and well jumping and slamming it into the floor so on and so forth he would give get around about three well one thirty points in villain point villain points and 62 in rescue points. Obviously nobody knew about the rescue points. Even All Might didn't tell him about the rescue points. Nor the point system itself. It was he toss and throw. Well destroyed carcasses of one pointers. Three pointers and two pointers. All over the place. Until he would hear the rumbling of the zero pointer. Obviously, he didn't know what it was, so when he saw everybody running, screaming at the Zero Pointer, all Zuku saw was a massive hand on a building, as it would be looking straight down at him. All Zuku would say is, Holy fuck, that is massive! And of course, uh, he then hears the Duraka's scream of pain. Izuku would run up to Uraraka 
to find out that she is unfortunately trapped underneath some rubble. Izuku wasn't going to leave her to uh, suffer like that, so he grabbed the rubble and flipped it off her as she simply asks if she's okay. She would nod, saying, I'm not 100% okay, but because of my ankle, but thank you for helping me anyway. I should be able to float myself so I'll be light, of, light for somebody to carry me out. But somebody has to stop that thing. As Luke would look to see that it's approaching, he doesn't have long left, as he just grabs a Duraka and says, In his mind, Alice, please forgive me for this. As he basically runs with Uraka in his arms. Uraka did eep and basically put herself in what looked like a fatal position. But since he's bridal, well, carrying her like a bride, bridal style, or bridal style carrying her, she couldn't tuck in her legs either. And all she could do was have a massive blush. Considering she's right next to his chest, and she could feel the muscles in there. Underneath that t-shirt, that seemed to be straining just to hold back his movement every time he moves, or even just gently flexes his arms. As he runs straight out of the, well, zone, and puts Uraka down on a bench, as he asks if there's anybody else still in there, a lot of people would shout no, but that thing is still coming towards towards us. I would have thought the heroes would have shut it down by now. In the control room, everybody's in a panic, because Nezu had basically told it to stop, and it hadn't. There was something interfering with the signal. So Izuku would run in, everybody would tell him and scream at him, telling him to come back. It's not safe in there. As the Zero Pointer would launch its hand to crush him, Zuku would dodge it. And Zuku would then grab hold of the finger and climb up it. Only for the Zero Pointer to grab it, him and its finger, ripping it off and ripping him away from his from its finger and tossing him into, well, into the centre of the fake city as the Zero Pointer would turn and roll towards Izuku. Everywhere else had already, well, got several individuals succeedingly past until all the, they would hear all the heroes panic and head towards, well, City D. It's, people will be wondering why they're heading to City D. As one of the students who had, who turns out to be Juro, would say the zero point of robot in City D has gone on, gone out of control. Nobody knows what's going on, but one student had gone in to go and fight the thing, and was current and had currently been been manhandled and tossed into the center of the fake city. The zero pointer is on its way to crush him. As Alice would just pray and say, Oh, every, God's above. Please make sure it's not Izuku. Is well, Alice would then get the bad news saying some guy called Izuku Midoriya is fighting the Zero Pointer. As Alice's heart would sink, it should just run trying to get to the well, the fake city D to uh, go and see if her boyfriend had not just turned himself into mush. And so, yeah. Azuku would stand up from being tossed into the centre of the city as the Zero Pointer had rumbled towards him. Azuku would run at it as it attempted to crush him once more. But instead of the Zero Pointer actually being able to crush him, the Zero Pointer misses, again as Azuku had jumped out of the way. This time, instead of going up its arms, it went up, he went up its, well, shoulders. All the shoulder panels over its, uh, well, tire, 
over its uh, tracks. As it would climb the inside, well, the outer side of the zero pointer. The zero pointer sensors would detect him as one hand would come to crush him again. This time, Azuka would see it and get out of the way, going on to the zero pointer's back, causing the zero pointer to kick it into fifth gear to go backwards as it slam into a building, causing Azuku to let go and cough. The zero pointer would turn, and for some odd reason, make a fist and plunge it straight into the crater that Azuku would be planted in. Azuku would just barely have enough time to cover his face as the meaty or the giant metal hand of the zero pointer would smash like a fist on the nose into Azuku, causing him to cry out in pain. It hurt. It hurt a lot. And well, he'd be pushed deeper and deeper into the uh, zero pointers, well, hole that it had made for Izuku. Eventually, Izuku would be able to get free as zero pointer punched him straight through the whole building. So when Izuku finally got free, he ran to go and hide. As he just says, shit, I actually need a weapon. As you'd see, well, some long metal, metal pipe, well, metal um, pipe, pipes. Is they wouldn't, they're not just like ordinary pipes, they're like metal, metal, metal pipes. Like, full on metal, there's nothing in, nothing hollow in the middle. Is they were attached to some, well, very sturdy bits of concrete. As he'd just pick both of them up and just drag them with him until he'd start running and, well, when the zero pointer goes to crush him again, Azuku tosses one, smashing it into the middle finger. Azuku then smash the other bit onto the thumb. And, well, the zero pointer will still move. After a while, heroes would turn up. It said all pretty much fight this zero pointer. Zuku would last one though to give it the final blow, as All Might pretty much picks him up and asks him where does he want to be tossed. Everybody would kind of be shocked that All Might's willing to throw a potential student. Zuku would pretty much line up his finger towards the zero pointer's head, as he would say, "Throw me towards the head of the zero pointer. I'm gonna try and smash through it." As All Might would just take a few steps back, then do a few jumps forward, then yeets Izuku as hard as he can upwards. Everybody would scream to All Might, what is he doing? He should go up there himself. As All Might would just say, believe in him. As All Might would say a silent prayer to Izuku, hoping that he would hear the prayer. It was kind of a feeling that All Might had when he said believe in him. Almost as if he was compelled to believe, to pray, to follow. Azuku would feel a sudden urge of power washing through him, as if someone had prayed to him or something. He would just shake it off, thinking that it was just a fluke, as he would just shout, Now go down and deactivate already. As he'd, both fists would smash into the zero pointer's frontal faceplate, as its whole back would go out, as the explosions would go around. As it could fall, finally exhaustion catching up to him. As before he could, he felt very strong arms wrap around his body and hit the floor hard. A man laughing, saying, well, 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 young man, you definitely did a good thing. And they whispered, I'm proud of you, my boy. Zuku just smiled, saying, thanks, dad. 
not loud enough for everybody to hear him, but loud enough for Toshinori to hear him. Because Toshinori would just smile, saying, You're most welcome, my son. So he would stand and walk towards the heroes. As he would smile, putting a hand... Well, keeping his hands underneath his son, saying, We need recovery, girl. He is out cold. With the biggest shit-eating grin on his face. A true father and son bonding time, in his, opi- in his opinion. Throwing his own son at a giant robot. <laughs> yes, like, that wasn't actually going to almost kill him or something like that just a few minutes ago. But hey. Is, that would happen. Hmm. Alice turns up screaming Izuku's name. All Might just chuckles knowing that young love is just that, young love. And so, he would allow the uh, young couple to leave. He is just smiling, knowing that his son definitely has a beautiful girl who truly does love and care for him. So, after spending an hour or two in the recovery bay, Azuki's eyes flicker open as he'd sit up like a zombie. And when he breathed, in he let out one hell of a sigh, saying, Damn, that hurt. As he'll just hear, I hope it did hurt you, Baka. You made me worried. He looked to his left to see Ashley there, looking at him, smiling, with tears in her eyes, thinking that she had lost him. But she would hug him, explain everything of what happened. That would be it. They would both go home to Inko, who was more than a little bit worried, but since she couldn't get into UA to see her son, she couldn't do much. But luckily, Ashley was already there to give him a hand. As Inko would just sigh, unfortunately she would grab some of her stuff. As Zook would ask where she's going, as Inko would just say, unfortunately I have been called into work. There's an expedition that I actually do need to go to. So I'm leaving you two here alone, no wild parties, and I do not want to be a grandmother just yet. As both of them would blush, shouting, Mum, Mrs. Midoriya, is... Both of them would be blushing up a storm. Inko would just be giggling, but then say with all seriousness, I'm serious, I don't want to be a grandmother just yet, you two. Please wait until you're 18. So she would kiss Izuku on the cheek on the cheek and she would begrudgingly give well Alice a hug and she'd walk away. Izuku would just sigh saying so what do we do now? Alice would just shrug saying I don't know why don't we make ourselves some tea? So Zuki would. They both sit down, laugh, joke, watch a movie. The next day they'll go out and exercise. And since she'd given UA where she lives, her acceptance letter would go into, well, in with Azuku's so she could, well, know her scores. A couple of days later, of constant training, they'd eventually get their acceptance letters. Both of them would undo the uh, lettering at the same time, revealing a small holodisc. As it would play a message from All Might. Both of them already knowing that uh, Toshinori Yagi was Deku's dad, he'd just 
basically say professionally is happy go lucky self that both of them that he slash Alice had both passed and both of them were more than ready to uh, well go into UA Uzuki found out that during his test he gained 168 villain points and 100 hero points which caught Uzuki off guard he wasn't expecting that at all Hell, even Alice thought that the hero system was just that, just the hero system. But nope, there was a system for heroes that rescued others too. And that was enough to give him at least 268 points. Zuko just basically cheered, saying, fuck yes. Alice, on the other hand, she only got 68 villain points and 12 hero points not many people wanted to be saved apparently it wasn't all that bad Izuku gave her a pat on the back saying that it's not the size well it's not the attitude that counts it's how you act towards people if they were not accepting of help then they clearly didn't want it it is you should just sigh and saying, yeah, but I bet I didn't get in. As All Might would just say, you both have passed UA's tests with flying colours. Welcome to your hero academia, and you're both being class 1A. As both of them would light up like Christmas, light, like Christmas trees, so both of them would cheer, bouncing around with each other, Izuku hugging her deeply, and Alice just r wrapping her legs around his waist and kissing him. Kissing him on his cheeks, his head, his lips. And hell, when she kissed him on the lips, she basically pushed her tongue into his, into his mouth, and they began a battle of the tongues. They were just so excited. Until they would hear someone cough and saying, I hope I'm not interrupting something, you two. If I was, I can just simply go outside and wait for you to finish. Both of them would then snap their heads towards the door to see All Might just standing there with a camera in hand. As all he would do is say, and send. As Dickie just bolts towards him and grabs the phone, seeing that it was sent. Zuku just pale as it was sent to Inko as Zuku would look to his dad as he would just say why did you send it to mum as All Might would just chuckle saying well she wanted blackmail material if you two ever decided to start having your lovey dovey moment which I can't blame you two for having as you just chuckle, saying, but your gran your mother and I are right. We both don't want to be grandmother grandparents just yet. Wait until you're 18 to start the family business, or something like that. Or hell, wait until you're actually married. As both of them would blush red as hell, but to both just be smiling at each other, knowing that they love each other too much to actually, well, Drop the both, both of them dropped their pants, and uh, well, her walking around with a, with a swollen belly due to having a baby inside. Sure, it would make them feel better about each other, but it would also put a bit of a dampener on whatever career they were planning to have. Considering, so they would just look to all my, who just chuckle, saying, "Don't worry, I'm not going to say anything to Inko." about this. As his phone would ding, as Inko would basically have laughing emojis saying and words saying, Oh my god, they look so embarrassed. Lol. As it'll be also followed by an a um G I F a gift 
a basically animated gif basically of someone rolling around on the floor laughing is well Toshinori just chuckle saying and that's sometimes why I married her she always has a bit of a weird sense of humour but that weird sense of humour is why I love her as he would then look to both Izuku and Alice as he would give them a thumbs up saying congratulations you two for getting into UA there is also a dormitory system already active since the f since a few years ago it was in well put into place by Principal Nezu himself in order to keep the students safe so if you two want you two can go into the dormitory system and you can be well living in the dorm systems so you can get to school earlier and not have to worry about constantly getting the bus Izuku would look to Alice as she would look to him she'd smile then turn to All Might saying as long as they don't mind me sneaking into Izuku's room to sleep with him a few times, I'll be good. All Might would laugh, a boisterous laugh of his own, as he'd just say, Oh, just make sure Aizawa doesn't catch you, because he's your, <laughs> he's your teacher, and he is strict. Even if I tell him that two of them are already in a relationship, he would not care. As long as your relationship doesn't interfere with your training to be a hero, he will not care as much. But he does care about results. So do not flunk any of his tests. So the, both of them would look at each other and have a silent discussion. Or might then sweeten the deal by saying that if you do go in there, you get to spend a little bit more time in there with me because I am also living on UA Canvas grounds for the time being. So you can always come to me and actually have some training or talk to me and I can give you some stories of my youth when I was first in UA. And I can tell you this, Aizawa was my best friend in UA. I knew him, present Mike and Endeavour all at UA. Endeavour's not my favourite person, but Aizawa is the funniest you would ever have as a teacher. Like I said, just don't piss him off. As both of them would look at him, saying, When do we leave? Yes, he would laugh, saying, You leave in two days to go to UA to get yourself set up. The dormitory system is already there, so you just need to take some stuff. Customize your own, well, your own goddamn rooms, and then that will be it. You'll be good. Izuku and, well, Alice would nod, saying, Fine. So All Might would turn around, and walk away, and pretty much say, I'll meet you in two days. Is it? They'd both, well, make some think to eat, and, well, have one dining session by themselves, because knowing them, they will have to have to put up with multiple people getting in the way of their uh, alone time. And so, one the day before they go, or the night before they go, they both decide that today is the day that they, well, will live life to the fullest. And what I mean by live life to the fullest is means that uh, Alice and Izuku both bought, brought condoms with them. Is Alice told him that she doesn't mind, but she wants to be protect, have protection. She doesn't want to have a baby just yet. And that very night, they ended up having lots of fun. And well, if All Might didn't 
turned up turn if all might turned up any uh, uh, earlier on during the day they would have heard someone still moaning out in pleasure or he would have heard someone still moaning in pleasure but since he turned up around about four in the afternoon he didn't hear any of that and they had the chance to get plenty of washing done they got in the shower they made sure that he would never find out that they had sex and luckily they were using protection well there was once when he thought when Azuku thought that the condom had ripped by her moaning out in loud pleasures but when he pulled out after well obviously exploding inside of the condom found out that it wasn't ripped at all it was just his imagination and they got made sure they got rid of the uh, <laughs> got rid of the condom so uh, all might didn't know that they uh, were doing the deed and well after that they pretty much got set up in their own rooms pretty much opposite each other really on the top floor Zuzuku had set up his room to be almost like a miniature, well, a miniature workout area. But it also had a bit of a TV to watch some movies with. And a, well, well, microwave really, if he wanted to make something in his own room. And... Ashley's, um, well, Alice's room, sorry, she pretty much made it to where it's basically holding memories, her of Iz her and Izuku, pretty much when they were going around places, really. She, her and him in, the mu in a, an amusement park, hugging, in the movies, and getting ice cream. Basically all the funny... All the fun, all the fun times that they had, and she even had a few more sensitive ones, where they were at the beach, and he was blushing up a storm. And then there was a more of a, a very intimate one, that she took of them when they were uh, doing the deed. And it was basically of her, basically lifting up her arm as. He was plowing her from behind. So yeah. She only could giggle seeing that she was very thoroughly enjoying herself. And she hid that one quite so well that even Manetta wouldn't see it. So yeah. The day where they go into class one A would come around. They would walk outside to see that there were no bags around so obviously they the other students weren't told about the um, well either a told about it and refused to come to ua canvas or were still thinking about it either way it didn't really bother them they would walk into ua pretty much hand in hand going and going up to UA's uh, classes as they were on the first floor so it's pretty much easy to get up there they'd find 1A after going past 1 well 1C 1B then got up to 1A as they'd open the door they would well be the f can't it be the fourth one or several, well, kind of be later on, as they're here basically arguing, and somebody basically saying, oh, shut up, four eyes. So both of them could just identify who that was. Kotsky Bokugo. Zuku wondered how the fuck he managed to make it into UA. Alice, she's just pissed. Her boyfriend and her will now be hounded by, well, the emo and the angry Pomeranian. One, because it is 
against school policy to be in a relationship with your fellow classmates, and the other because he's an absolute dick and just wants to, well, strangle him with either rope or strangle him with her thighs. But when she thought that, no, she said, no, strangle my strangle my boyfriend with my thighs because I know he'll love it. This is a good kind of sneeze as you look to his girlfriend as you just whisper, were you thinking about me? And she just, well, cutely giggle, saying, maybe. But hey, they would move on. And, uh, when Zuku opened the door, basically, they'd see either, basically telling Bokugo to get his feet off the desk, it was very, it's very disrespectful to their previous classmates. The whole thing of four eyes and schools come up to it. Ida tries to introduce himself again. Until, well, Uraraka basically makes herself known by uh, talking behind the two lovers. Saying, oh, you're the guy with the curly hair. Izuku, right? Izuku would turn around and look down, considering Uraraka's a lot shorter than him. I failed to mention this. Izuku's a lot taller. He's around about six... No, he's around about six two. Uraraka's around about, I believe, she is six nine or well, six, no, five six. So she's quite a bit shorter than he is. So he is looking down on her, not being rude to her or anything, but he has to actually look down to physically see her. He's, he basically says yes. Uraraka basically says thank you a hundred times for saving me from getting crushed. I really do appreciate it, and sorry if I caused you any problems. Azuku would just say it was no problem at all. After all, it's a hero's duty to actually help their fellow student, even if they are potentially not going to be students. Still good to help others. She would thank him and walk away. Either would basically charge up to him and say say in his own words sorry for being an arsehole because he would say he was a better student than he was because he found out the secret test of well, rescue points Izuku and uh, Alice would both chuckle saying they both actually didn't know about it either they found out when they found out that they both got into UA together. Is well, Ina would ask, "What do they? What does he mean? What What do they mean?" Because they both spoke together. Zuku pretty much raised his hand with hers locked in his hand, saying, "We're an item," as they would usually say it these days. Ina would only blink once, twice, and then make a complete ass of himself by saying relationships between fellow students is prohibited you're meant to be heroes Ina would then get shut up by Azuki basically glaring at him saying what I, what me and her do in our lives is what me and her do in our lives it has nothing to do with you Ida if you had a relationship I would get, I would congratulate you and move on if you have someone to protect, you're ten times stronger than the hero you want to be. Yes. Either would accept what he's... Well, think about what he said. And go to his own seat. Everybody would remain quiet for that, considering they already figured out Ida was by the rules, and you have to do it by the rules. So hearing him actually getting laid out like that and actually had a few rule had a few things pointed out to him that made actual sense was actually kind of surprising. Unfortunately, they did hear their new teacher of Aizawa saying, "If you're here to make friends, leave. This school isn't here for friendship. It's here to make you into heroes, not friends." Is well, somebody would just have to comment saying, ah, angry caterpillar. As Isaiah would stand 
in his own sleeping bag as he'd just sip on some drink some drink to keep his energy up as he'd then step out of it saying my name is Shoto Aizawa I'll be your homeroom teacher for the next three years to make you into actual heroes as he'd bring out some well sports uniform as he'd just simply say now here's your sports uniform go to the changing rooms and get them on we're going to have a well, quirk aptitude test. Uraraka would say what she says in canon about orientation. Aizawa pretty much says, my, my class, my rules. Now get going. And that is actually where I'm ending it, people. Hope you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.